Morning, welcome to the next edition of uh, Andy Collier Talk Cricket Memorabilia. We are in the um, library of David Frith, um, one of the world's leading cricket historians who's agreed to do our first interview on these blogs. Um, so hopefully we're going to start by uh, seeing how, or how he started with his collection and how it's uh, developed from there on, all the important things that he's collected. So uh, it should be an interesting afternoon. We're on. This is Bert Oldfield's Australian Tour Blazer from 1930. And I guess it's what started me off as a collector. When I was a young fella, I went into his shop in Sydney and uh, got to know him quite well. I went in quite often and one day he simply came out with this. He said, David, I'd like you to have this. 1930 Australian Blazer on the tour of England. He was the sweetest man, wicketkeeper, very elegant wicketkeeper. I actually saw him keep when he was in his late fifties and the elegance was, was always there. And I, I thought it was a wonderful gesture. He gave me a cricket ball that was used in a 1930 test match as well. And from that point onwards, I decided I'd like to build upon this. I had no idea that one day I'd have such an immense collection, but I suppose if I've got to blame anyone, it's Mr. Oldfield. No, that's a nice memory, Dave. Lovely. Um, now we're just going to have a quick tour around this corner of the museum. Um, we can see where Bertie Oldfield's blazer is. There's obviously also Bob Willis's tall blazer up there and uh, Jeff Thompson's cap, uh, Alan Border's cap. And we're going to move down and we're coming to quite a significant uh, cabinet with all sorts of balls and things in it, um, trophies. Uh, work our way down and in that, in that um, bottom cabinet there is the coin uh, that tossed the second test match in the Argo Bly Tour in 1882 so we're going to get that out and have a bit of a chat with that okay so we, David's now holding the coin that uh, tossed up the second test match of the 1882 series this was given to Bly after he visited Tasmania and George Sean the governor of Tasmania gave him the back they gave him the coin to uh, wish him a bit of luck so the next test match he won the, won the toss and uh, the rest is history as they say. So do you want to have a little chat about that Dave? <coughs> yes, it was um, acquired by Fred Spofforth, the demon bowler. And he gave it to Levi Wright when he played for Derbyshire. And uh, Ron Yeomans, great collector from Yorkshire, he bought it off Wright. And eventually I bought it off... Uh, him, so uh, it's one of my prized possessions because it's a direct link with the first, with the birth of the ashes. Wonderful little thing to have. Mm. Lovely, fantastic thing. Uh, the books are all in a category form. All of this end section is England v Australia. Uh, I think I've got just about every book on the series after series going right back to, well beyond, back to the 1862 tour from 1877 onwards. A lot of them are signed, not just by Don Bradman, but by the authors and cricketers who played in these Ashes series, sometimes the whole team. And here, all of this his biography and autobiography, alphabetical, probably a third of them are signed or inscribed, some of them quite tenderly and one or two quite brutally, like Merv Hughes had got a few things off his chest. Uh, up here are scores of biographies including a very precious volume one signed by Fred Lillywhite, the publisher. Really? And by Arthur Haygarth, who compiled it. Rather yeah. painful inscription 
saying, I did all the work. Hmm. Uh, he resented Lily White's uh, bombast. Um, after the biographies comes Australian books, West Indies, India, New Zealand, MCC, Lords, Miscellaneous, Pictorial, uh, up the top there, quite a lot of fiction, uh, broadcasting, uh, humour, so-called, <laughs> and the overflow here. I'm running out of space. It's a one-day England cap belonging to one of my heroes, my favourite, Derek Randall. This may be the most precious of all. It's, it's a cap that I bought from Tom Richardson's son. Now, those now are they didn't ones. award caps when Tom played. They started to award them 1905, but they may have presented them to past England players. Either that or his good friend Billy Brockwell gave it to him. But it belonged, whatever, to Tom Richardson for the rest of his life. He died 1912. That's a real treasure, that one. This, uh, this is Bert Oldfield's New South Wales cap. And anyone familiar with that glorious cover drive photo of Wally Hammond, Bert Oldfield is behind the stumps down low wearing this cap in that classic photograph. Lovely. It's a beautiful, beautiful wicket keeper. Famous picture of a famous cap. Yes. This cap was presented to me by a man who hardly ever wore it, Bishan Beatty. Ooh. He had a papka and there is one of his papkas, like a mm. turban. Mm. And there's the cap that he reluctantly wore from time to time. Special pictures. Uh, this cap belonged to John Edridge. It's uh, an England touring cap. He toured Australia more than once in West Indies. 1953 this belonged to Gil Langley, the Australian wicketkeeper. I remember he caught Peter Richardson in all eight of his innings on that tour. <laughs> That's a feat. Uh, Gil Langley was bold, so he always wore his cap. Transvaal cap. Uh, that belonged to a chap called Zulch, I'm pretty certain. London School, at. no, Lancashire Schools. This was worn by the young Michael Atherton. Ah. Long before he earned the first of his many England caps. Um, that's a Surrey Seconds cap. Hmm. Uh, worn by a chap called Shepherd. Oh, Tom Shepherd. Yes. And this one is uh, Kingswood College, Grahamstown. Belonged to C. N. Frank, who played for South Africa. He'd been gassed, I think, in the First World War. So it. Uh, it was painful for him to run quick singles. Mm. This is the cap that belonged to the great Clary Grimmett. And since he always bowled his leg spinners with his cap on, it really is part of Ash's history. Mm. Uh, these two caps are my own. Firstly, the St George cap. Now, I played as a youngster for St George and was proud to wear this cap, which was one, the same cap was worn by Don Bradman and Bill O'Reilly and Ray Linville 
and my contemporary who was Norman O'Neill. And then I moved on to Paddington, much nearer to Sydney, played for the Paddington Club, whose greatest batsman was none other than Victor Tromper. And among our vice presidents was Neville Cardus, who lived in Paddington during the war in the Paddington area. So these are very precious to me, St George and Paddington caps. I'm sure with the links they have with the truly great.